I'm interested in a genuine, fair society for men and women. And I hate living in a society where it's, which is all about advancing women at the expense of men. One of the bravest women in our country is running an event this weekend every Aussie bloke needs to know about. And she joins us now to tell us more. Well, thank you, Bettina, for joining us. And to be honest, as somebody, as a man that's learnt the hard way how broken our system actually is and how you're, you're, you're literally guilty until proven innocent. And even in my case, you sometimes cop a plea just so you can see your own kids. I'm so grateful uh, for all the work you do. And I know you have a, an amazing event this weekend. So let's get straight into it. Tell us what's happening. We're having a conference on restoring the presumption of innocence, which is very much on what you've been talking about, Arby, and what's happening to thousands and thousands of men across the country, dealing with false accusations, ending up in, in court, spending thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to try to defend themselves. Uh, as you know, it's a total nightmare and no one is prepared to talk about it. And we've got together a group of experts, we've got law professors, we've got criminal lawyers, we've got all sorts of people to tell the truth about what's happening to men in this country. And I think it's a really unique event. Why does nobody want to talk about it? Well, I would argue that I mean, this is all part of a campaign led by feminists, mm -hmm. uh, activists who are absolutely now controlling our justice system and controlling our media. Uh, and they, you know, they've got, they're absolutely silencing anybody who speaks out on this issue. I mean, a few years ago, I was virtually cancelled for my work for men, and they just piled on with all this rubbish they published around me. Um, anybody, you know, and Pauline Hanson has been brave enough to talk about false allegations, and they, you know, they, they abs all the media attacked her for that. Um, and people have learned to keep their heads down and not to talk about it. Domestic violence, we all would agree, is a really serious issue. We need to protect women from dangerous men, but they are doing Australian men such a disservice in claiming widespread domestic violence in this country. It is simply not true. I'll tell you a really interesting statistic. At our conference, we're going to be presenting the real data, and our Bureau of, Australian Bureau of Statistics has a figure showing only 0.6% of Australian women are physically attacked by their partner or ex-partner in, in any year. I mean, that's, that's the sort of figure that's been turning up for years and years and years. We, when we think of domestic violence, we think of physical abuse, don't we? We don't think of financial abuse. We don't think of emotional abuse. What they've done is included in the statistics all this other stuff so that they can claim there's an epidemic of violence. And they are using that to defame the reputations of ordinary Australian men who are predominantly very safe men for women to be around. Well, it's interesting you say that because I did one of those men's behavioral change courses. And I'll tell you that that was the probably one of the toughest 20 weeks of my life because I know I'd done nothing wrong. I'm just jumping through every hoop because I'll do anything for my kids. But I remember you get there and, and they make you fill out this form with physical violence was one out of maybe a hundred. Yep. And most of it was emotional kind of abuse. And what I found fascinating, and I asked the um, the counsellor or whatever they are that, that run those courses, I said, can I ask you something? So when you look at this, right, if in every situation you have a victim and an abuser, if you gave my ex-partner this exact thing and she filled it out as honestly as I did, she would clearly be the abuser, not me. Mm -hmm. um, do you have an equivalent for women? And, you know, I almost got kicked out of the course on day one, but that they don't have a course for women when, like you say, most domestic abuse that they refer to as domestic abuse is not physical. No. And, I mean, well, look at coercive control. Of course, they're now taking this all to a whole new level. We've got laws in New South Wales and coming into Queensland, criminalising what they call coercive control, which is this 
indefinable. Domestic violence, you don't get immediately sent to jail unless you breach a domestic violence order. And so it's a convoluted route, if you say, if you like. Coercive control is a criminal offence. You could be sent, virtually sent straight to jail with this. And it's so dangerous for men. And the fascinating thing is we passed the law in New South Wales a couple of years ago and they put it on hold because they were nervous of women being misidentified as perpetrators, which I thought was pretty funny. <laughs> because they're so controlling. Knows who's really good at emotional abuse? Women are. 100%. We're the women. We know how to press your buttons. We know how to drive you crazy, uh, get you really irate. And so they're, they're really nervous. The coercive control will be used uh, to send men, women to jail. And so they've put police women in police stations across the country now to make sure that doesn't happen. This is deli- just simply a weapon to get men sent to prison. And this is the goal of the feminists, to get more men sent to prison. And on my talk on Saturday, I'm going through the evidence showing how well the feminists are doing. And we have across the country men locked up and it's going up exponentially. And most, a hell of a lot of these men now are being imprisoned without even a trial. They're there on remand. I mean, it is terrifying what's happening in our justice system and people need to know about this and that's why we're having this conference almost every man in that course was currently court ordered to not be able to see the kids or the kids not being able to see their family whether it's through current intervention orders whether and not for any reasons other than allegations that don't ever have to be proven when it comes to an intervention order. It just, it, it simply is the allegation. No, nothing. Yeah. The point being is family alienation, which they consider to be the biggest, uh, one of the biggest forms of domestic violence is actually more often than not court ordered because of the woman. How do Absolutely. we, how do we reconcile all of that? Oh, we can't. I mean, this whole thing is full of these incredible inconsistencies. Um, and we, we can never even talk about it, as I've said. We're not allowed to discuss these things publicly. Um, parental alienation is widely understood to be predominantly perpetrated by women. I mean, women usually have control of the kids. They're given control by the courts or by making false allegations. And then they... they can absolutely determine whether the parent, the father ever sees the, those children. Uh, if they make false allegations of violence or sexual abuse, uh, there's no question he won't be allowed to see the kids or if he ever gets to see the kids, it'll be under supervised contact. Uh, we're, go, we're doing something on at the conference on supervised contact, which is unbelievable system, punitive system of really further alienating men from their children. I mean, that people, the people who are taking notes while you see your child in some ghastly centre somewhere are using those notes to against you in court. I mean, it's deliberate. And, and, and you have to pay for that time yeah. ludicrous <laughs> amounts of money. I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm getting shivers and the hairs are standing on my body. I know I went through all of this a few years ago and the media love to keep pre- reprinting their their lies because... It's, it's, it's just an insane, broken system. And it's why I'm, I'm so grateful you're running this. And I hope, I hope as many men uh, as possible come to the conferences to educate themselves so they can educate others. Because I think a big part of it is lack of education. When you're thrown into this situation and you don't actually know how to deal with it, um, you often make it worse. Like I said, many of the men that I, I met were put into jail at the end because... They just didn't understand what was happening. They couldn't believe the allegations that were being thrown at them. And they thought, surely the justice system is going to know that I'm innocent because I've never done any of this. Well, no, 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 no. Because I can tell you personally, I never did anything, let alone even the things that I ended up copping a plea on. My biggest crime was that I just never wanted to give up on my kids. And I'm glad I didn't because today... I'm happily married and I get to do what I fought so hard to be able to, to have. And that's to have a, a healthy relationship with my children. I'm very pleased you've, you've got through that. But we have, as you say, we have to teach men how to deal with these situations when they arise, not to talk to the police. 
not to agree to uh, an AVO. I mean, that-, <laughs> that was that was my first major mistake. I was so sure I was innocent, and yeah. I I know never to talk to the police. I was so sure I was innocent. I, oh, I even I called the lawyer, and he goes, "If you're that sure, tell him." Worst advice I ever got because that's no. that's how they get you. And the lousy lawyers. Our country is full of lawyers who are ripping men off. The majority of people out there listening to this know this is happening and they're too afraid to talk about it. We have to change that and we have to start lobbying politicians. We have to stop. Look at the Family Law Act last year was changed to remove any mention of children's rights to be cared for by both parents. Uh, we'd led the world for for many years, ever since the Howard government, we had laws in place saying that this was enshrined in our family law system, that right of children to have dads in their lives. It's all been tossed out by this Labor government. We should never have allowed that to happen. We have to stop people who are essentially anti-male from pushing through laws that are all about destroying men's lives. I understand why I'm so passionate about this because I've obviously I've lived it. Why do you care so much? You should be enjoying your rights as a woman. Your first past. Here yeah, I'm an old granny, you know. I've got three gorgeous grandchildren. I should be just sitting doing my knitting and looking up. I look, you should see my mail. I mean, I get hundreds of families contact me every week. Uh, and it's been happening to me for decades that when I started to show an interest in men, uh, even though my initial work, I used to be a sex therapist working mainly for women, but men started to talk to me. I started hearing what was happening in my, men's lives. And I'm interested in equity. I'm interested in a genuine, fair society for men and women. And I hate living in a society where it's, which is all about advancing women at the expense of men. I mean, th- thank you so much. It'd be very nice to talk to you. And I was very sorry when I heard about the struggle you went through. But at one level, I thought, thank goodness, here we have a well-known man who is telling it as it is. And we need more well-known males to talk honestly about what they're going through. I wish the silver lining wasn't at my own expense, but I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I know. Thank I was you. celebrating. I hate to say, no, obviously, I, look, at it, my heart bleeds for any man yeah. going through that. But we but, need people to talk about it. Look, I, I'm, I'm like pretty thick skinned and I can tell you I was lucky that I had a the great partner when it when it all kind of happened it was before we got married but I can tell you now there was one day it's the, what we call in the family the day we don't ever talk about and it was a day that if I didn't have her I probably wouldn't be here today I'm a, and, and I'm somebody that's mentally strong has been through a lot lived a million lives but it all got too much. I didn't know, I couldn't believe what I was being charged with. I couldn't believe what my the person that used to be my best friend was suddenly alleging because our relationship fell through and I was now in a new relationship. I couldn't believe, I didn't know when I would see my kids again. I think that was the hardest. You just don't know and nobody can give you a straight answer because the system needs to change. I hope you have a lovely Father's Day on Sunday. I mean, but, you know, there are a lot of men who never see their kids again because they get alienated from them. That's yep. the ultimate tragedy. Um, you know, you're one of the lucky ones, I hate to say it. No, I, I, I agree. <laughs> If you think it's important for every Aussie bloke to know what's really happening in our country to men, make sure to like, comment, but most importantly, share it far and wide because we know that the media has been lying about this issue for years. And then head below, check out the link to the event itself. If you can make it, get yourself some tickets. But if you can't, have no fear. We will at rebelnews.com.au. We will run the live there on the day on Saturday so you can head back to the website and watch it live. Don't miss it. And if you want to know my personal story, my personal struggle, how I overcame it, head over to rebelfromthestart.com. Read my full story. Don't believe their headlines. Rebelfromthestart.com. The good, the bad, the ugly. I share it all and I hope to empower others. Rebelfromthestart.com.